Francisco Garcia is a Spanish diver. One day, he and his dive buddy, Guillermo Mascaro, wanted to explore Sapiqueta, which is a beautiful cave one kilometers from the entrance of the labyrinth. Then, some unexpected, extraordinary things happened. Garcia was trapped in the underwater cave for 60 hours. He was trapped there for more than two days. How could a man survive in such a dreadful situation? The diver who spent 60 hours trapped in an underwater cave revealed that he considered knifing himself to death to end his terrifying ordeal. We are eager to dig deep into this perilous adventure story and we'd like to take you too. So hello and welcome to Adventure Uncovered. If you're a true adventurer, subscribe to our channel and uncover more adventures. Don't forget to hit that bell icon. Now it's time to dive into Zisco Garcia's epic survival story. Zisco Garcia had faced every diver's worst nightmare. On Saturday, April 15th, Zisco Garcia slid into the water for a regular dive in Mallorca. Mallorca is much more beautiful underground than above ground, Garcia says. This geology teacher enjoys exploring and tracking the island's complicated underwater caves. To explore Sapiqueta, Garcia started his journey in Marcaro. They swam for an hour underwater to get there. Marcaro swam away to chart a nearby chamber while Garcia collected rock samples. Several things had gone wrong at the same time as they were driving home. Garcia happened to meet Makaro at a crossroads, and they mixed the silt from the surface. This made visibility difficult. While diving, a continuous guideline to the surface must always be set up by cave divers. These guidelines are intended to guide divers back to where they began their journey. These two realized then that their guideline, a narrow nylon wire that linked straight to the entrance, had either been damaged or dropped. Two of them tried to spend a lot of time trying to figure out the guideline, but in vain. They were certain that some rocks had fallen on it. The divers were in serious danger at that point. They only had a limited oxygen supply which they had bought with them in order to enter and exit. Moreover, the majority of their emergency air was also less. Fortunately, Garcia recalled that other divers had mentioned an air pocket in a nearby chamber. He drew Makaro to it, and there they had discussed their available options. They both knew that they had just a little air for one of them to escape. There was never enough time for lengthy discussions because it was a critical time. Can you imagine yourself in this situation? We decided that I would stay and Gwilym would go for help. He was skinnier than me and needed less air for breathing. I was also more experienced at breathing cave air, which has higher karma dioxide levels, says Garcia. Now let's see how wise the decision really was. They drew a map of an alternate, longer route. The return route was blurry because they had no guidelines. Makaro needed to travel along their new path without a map and with a risk of getting lost. It would have been like driving a car on a foggy night, Garcia explained. Gwilym was still reluctant to abandon Garcia, but they knew it was the only option. After Makaro had left, Garcia removed most of his equipment and examined the chamber. It's a diver's enthusiasm. The cave was approximately 80 meters long and 20 meters wide. The water and the ceiling are separated by a 12 meter gap. He realized that the lake's surface water was good to drink. He also found a big flat rock on which he could rest and pulled himself up from the water. Garcia made the decision that he would have to go without light because two of his three torches had stopped working and the third would soon run out of batteries. He was a wise survivor, which is why he turned on the torch only when he needed to pee or dive down to get fresh water. For the first seven to eight hours, Garcia was clinging to hope that Gwilym would survive but his confidence began to fade as time passed. Gwilym has gone missing and died, and no one knows I'm down here, he thought. Can you imagine a situation like this? What will you do when you know you're going to die? Garcia started feeling worried about his loved ones at this point. I have two children, a son of 15 and a daughter of nine. I thought about how they were too young to lose their father and what would happen to them, he said. 
Tension causes a person to consume more oxygen, which Garcia was aware of. He managed to keep his mind cool. However, he began to feel the effects of high levels of carbon dioxide. While the air we breathe above ground contains 0.04% carbon dioxide, the level in the cave reached 5%. I had a headache, and although I was exhausted from lack of oxygen, it was impossible to sleep. My brain was whirring, he shared. I thought at first I could hear the sound of tanks being filled with air for the rescue team. Later, I realized they must be trying to drill through the rock. I was really happy as I realized that they were looking for me. Garcia then experienced hallucinations through stages. He had the feelings that there were lamps in the lake, and he even caught the sound of a diver's bubbles emerging. But there was nothing to be found. Garcia began to lose track of time, but after what seemed like days, he heard a loud sound above him. He realized that Meccano had succeeded. Suddenly, the noises stopped, and Garcia had been faced with his darkest hour. His fear of death, like that of any other diver, frustrated him. The most unpleasant death without food and air. He could no longer go into the water to drink because his torch was completely out. Then he reached for his tools, which included his knife. It was an option for him. Either a quick death with that knife, or a slow death in the cave. Let's take a quick breather to remind you to subscribe to Adventure Uncovered. Hurry up guys, time's a ticking. Garcia thought he had bubbles again shortly after this. He noticed a diver's light which appeared to grow more and more intense. Garcia, on the other hand, thought it was just a hallucination. But later, he realized it was real when he saw a helmet emerge. Bernard Clamore, an old friend of Garcia, called to him. I jumped into the water and embraced him. He was asking me how I was and telling me that he had been so afraid that I had died. Overnight, Garcia was given oxygen gas to breathe. Even keeping calm and composed mentally was a challenge for him. Garcia had kept his emotions in check throughout this phase. You have to be able to control your emotions while diving, but the next day, I watched coverage of the big rescue operation on TV and I cried. I was so thankful. Even we got our eyes wet after listening to such a brave yet emotional story. How two friends made a decision and the other one waited with a lot of hope. But once Garcia started losing hope, how he thought about his family. Every instance is no less than a film. Would you give up diving if you were in Garcia's position? Whatever your response, Garcia has not given up diving despite his close call. He returned to Sarpiqueta a month after the incident. He's even been to the chamber where he was imprisoned for so long. He enjoys being underwater, which is why he never holds a grudge against the cave. It's not like it's the cave's fault, he said. Garcia plans to keep mapping Mallorca's underwater legacy. So what do you think about the video? If you liked it, then give us a big thumbs up. Did you know that in Diver's Sign Language, thumbs up means the diver needs to go above water level? Keep that comment box full of all of your valuable notes and suggestions. Subscribe button is all yours to hit and ring that bell icon too. Many more intriguing content is coming, so stay tuned. But for now, goodbye.